Hello and welcome back to FEM Expert. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform a model analysis of a mass spring model in SSA PDL. In this scope, we're going to use a very simple model. The idea behind today's tutorial is, how, is to understand aspects of the model behaviors of, of the structures and the theory and how to modify these characteristics. So for today's model, as we used in the previous tutorial, we're going to use a model of a suspended mass of 25 kilograms uh, over of a spring having 225,000 newton meters of stiffness. So today we're going to use, uh, we're going to ha we have here the screen split. On the right we have all of the commands that perf uh, allow us to perform the simulation and on the left we have the ANSYS APDL window. So we're gonna go little by little, step by step, because we're gonna change a couple of things in order to analyze how the, these structures behave and what's behind the model uh, behavior of the structures. So we're gonna need to use this routine to do it uh, in a relatively fast manner. So we're gonna start with this, prep seven, we're gonna copy and we're gonna paste. What would this that what this would do? Prep seven will give us under preprocessors and ET one twenty one would define the element type one as mass twenty one and ET two fourteen it would define that element type two as combin fourteen with their default um, default uh, specifications. Then we're gonna go and re and use this command which are are defining the real constants. So this would give us real constant one, which will correspond to the mass. So set one, edit, mass. It will, it will put a value of 25 on the first three variables. So our win, a real value one, 25, 25, 25, would complete the real constant set one with 25 on these three variables. So, okay, so we're gonna go now to set two, the combine 14, which would tell 25,000 uh, uh, newton meter on the spring constant, so exactly what we need. We're gonna go here now and we're gonna create uh, these, uh, we're gonna create these uh, key points, key point one, key point two, with a, on a difference of 0 0.5 meters between them and a line that, com that connects them both. We can uh, here, just in case, if you need to check this, you can do a KDS comma P and click on both of the key points and it's gonna give you the overall distance and the distance on each one of the axes. So zero, zero on Z, X and Y and 0 0.5 meters on Z, which is exactly what we want. Then we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna go to LE size. LE size, it represents the size uh, element of a line. So it determines how many, uh, the, the number of divisions or the size of, an, uh, of the elements are going to be used when meshing that line. So this would be under modeling, no, it would be under meshing, size controls, manual size, lines, pick lines or all lines are gonna pick all. And you see LE size, it could be the size on the number of divisions. We're not gonna do this, we're gonna use this and we're gonna look, look at the command line, which is, it has to be, here we have to copy and here we have to paste. So LE size, LE size, we have the name, number of line, the size and the angular size. So if we have LE size, we're gonna copy this one, having a couple of issues. The number of line is one. We don't want the size, we don't want the angular size, so we can do comma, 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 and we do want the number of divisions, which is gonna be one. So then we're gonna have uh, one division per element in order to obtain only one spring and not to obtain multiple springs. If we would uh, do the meshing with uh, multiple elements, we will have a three or more, depending on the number of uh, springs altogether, one after another in series, which would change the model behavior of the, of the whole structure. Then we're going to go to LATT, which introduces the properties, the line attributes, and we're gonna select of all of the selected lines. This command doesn't allow you to select only a few, only if you use the P command, the comma pick. 
So we're going to have it uh, LATT. There's no materials. We don't need a material. And we have real 2 and type 2. Real 2 is the stiffness of the spring. And element type 2 is the combing 14. So we hit OK. And then we can perform an L list just in case. And we have the only line that we have. It has real 2 and material type and real 2 and type uh, element type 2. So now we're going to keep going. We're going to select the key point number two. We're gonna select the key point number two. We can do a key plot. We know the key point number two is the second one is the top one on the top. And we assign the properties to it, the attributes to it as element type one and real constant one. Element type one is the mass element and real constant one is the 25 kilograms of the suspended mass. Once we did, we did that, we can proceed to mesh this element with kmesh comma all and if we look at eplot we're going to see they only have the mass element which is what we need then we can select all do a line mesh comma all to mesh all the lines and then non merging just in case it is not explicitly necessary and we can actually e list if we have a curiosity we can see there's only one line element and there's the mass so there's element one which is material one type one real one section one it has and this is the mass and element two which is two two and it's composed by two nodes which is the spring element then we can we can imply we can put a sign here we have the, the spring in, on the bottom has the embedment so to introduce the embedment we can use the dk comma one all zero which means the displacement constraints constraints on key points the number of key points, we know it's one because we created it and we want to restrict all of the degrees of freedom with the value zero. So we do that and we we have it all set up. In the previous tutorials we were using dk, p, selecting, saying all degrees of freedom, putting zero and hitting OK. But this is faster and it allows us to automatize our simulation. Then we're going to go to, we would normally go to solution, analysis type, new analysis, select model. And then analysis expansion, the number of modes and stuff. So if we do that and we copy, we follow that procedure and we copy the results that we obtain from list files, log file at the end of the file, at the last, very, very last end of the file, like int type 2 here, we would be doing exactly that procedure but in a fast, more automatic mode. Then we have the solo solve. I'm going to just go ahead and do it and then we have the post one set list set last so post one would get us into general post processing and set list is the equivalent of going saying read results by peak and it will show us all of the frequencies and the results the, the results that we obtained but it's just in a in a text form manner so then from here we can select the first set, first set and do the PLNL sol, comma, sum. And we can see the results that we obtain. So we're going to analyze a little bit of the results. Here we have set last. We are doing the last. We're selecting the last uh, results. And here we can see that uh, well, the frequency is 5.032. The display event is not realistic, so we cannot really take it into consideration, but we can analyze a couple of things. So we're going to go now into this uh, model, into the graphic. We have here the model of the suspended mass with the stiffness, and we have omega, which is the result, the frequency result for the model behavior, is calculated as the square root of k, which is the stiffness of the spring or material, or the structure, depending on what we have, and m, which is the mass. This is, uh, this is in radians per second. And in our situation, we will have 25,000 divided by 25, and the square root will give us 31.62277 radians per square second. We also know that omega is 2p or with multiplied by the frequency, from which we can obtain the frequency equal as omega divided by 2p, from which we obtain 5.032.9214 hertz. This is exactly what ANSYS is providing us here. The frequency is 5.03292. This is the this is the stiff, This is the spring's uh, own frequency, 
if we go on, we're going to look on the first set. On this, uh, on this um, understanding these displacements or that these behaviors can be tricky. Here the frequency is zero. We can either uh, animate or we can use plvect, comma y, and this will give us the vector and it shows you where or how is this structure displace, uh, moving, where is the displacement. So for example, we can do that for the first set, the second set, they're on their lateral, lateral frequencies, and the third one is the one we are interested in, it represents the model frequency, it's 5.03292. If we go to animate, we can animate the mode shape, we can see the degrees of freedom solution, we can do the deformed shape and uh, plus undeformed, and we will clearly see, it is hard to see on this because the color is blue, so we'll, I'll use the, I'll use the, first of all, I'll use the D scale 1, 1 to get the scale more bigger, not more realistic, but just bigger. So we're going to go plot controls, animate mode shape, and we're going to go to use some. So this will be the model behavior of at this frequency of our spring, it will compress and expand, having our mass. This is not extremely complicated from the user's stance point of view. For the first set, we would have a model reaction mode shape going to the side, which in our case would not be realistic, realistic because if we have a spring like uh, like the one here presented here, this would have a much higher stiffness on the lateral uh, on the x and y directions. But the program calculates these values because well, it's able to calculate all of the values. We're not gonna get in details right there. What we're going to do is we're gonna look at the last value and we're gonna analyze a little bit of the of the theory. So. Here we have a 5.03292. This means that our structure will have an important reaction on the z-direction if we introduce this frequency. So the question would be, how can we modify these frequencies? And one of the answers, well, the answer lies in the equation omega equals right square root of k divided by m. So here we can see, for example, that the frequency would increase if the stiffness of the spring increases or the mass that's suspended, it decreases. In this, in our situation, will just be the mass. And the other case would be the frequency decreases if the stiffness either decreases or the mass increases. So we're gonna try one of these cases. We're gonna try to increase the, 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 the omega, the frequency, the, the own frequency. So to do that, we're gonna go into our model. So we have 5.0, I'm gonna take note of this just in case, 5.03292. So we're going to try to increase this value. So how can we increase this value? We go back to the, how can we increase this value? By increasing the stiffness or decreasing the mass. So we're going to try to increase the stiffness because it's easier for us here in our, our value. We only have to change one variable compared to three. So we're going to put 50, no, let's put 35,000 uh, newtons divided by uh, meter. So we're going to, Go. I'm gonna hit resume, so I don't have anything here. If you don't, if you can't resume because you have something saved, you can go to finish and then hit slash clear, and that will clear your database. So, in my case, I'm gonna resume, and I'm gonna copy again just in case. I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna post it, paste it. Sorry, and as we can see, we got an increase from. 5.950. From 5.032 to 5.9950, we're going to change this value. We're going to try to do double. We're going to see if the increase is uh, it's equivalent. So I'll hit resume again and do this. So 7.1176. So and then later in the talk, we're going to look at these results more in, in more detail. But for a situation in which we had, so we can turn this around. We'll have, we'll see exactly the same results. Sorry, we're gonna see exactly the same results. Our model is gonna be moving up and down. 
we're going to have uh, the mass is going to move up and down. We're going to have point two displacement. If that the displacement is not a reference, though, it's the same in these situations. And we have an increase of from 5.95 hertz to 7.11 hertz, although the stiffness has increased in double the value. Well, this is, uh, we got to be taken into consideration and we're going to analyze in a later tutorial that uh, this, the, the, the variation between the stiffness and the mass and the frequencies are not uh, linear. So therefore the estimations cannot be made on linear valuations. Nevertheless, with uh, this, uh, with this text here, you can perform very easily any modifications and try to see, we're gonna go to 10,000, for example, and we're gonna try to see what happens. And, oh, sorry, if you, that's the mistake that you would obtain if you don't resume or clear your database. So I'm gonna get uh, here. I'm gonna look at this again. And as you can see, we reduced the frequency. So this was for 25,000 uh, stiffness, 35,000 stiffness, 50,000 stiffness, and 3.1831 for, that's for 10,000 stiffness, 10,000 stiffness. So you can clearly see the results uh, have a um, are correct. They have the, uh, a clear connection between them and what was expected according to the equations. And that way, well, we can um, understand a little bit more. You can understand a little bit more of the behavioral behavior, uh, model behavior of, of the structure, how the structures behave. And if you want to modify a structure from its, um, from its model point of view, you would have to either increase their stiffness increase or increase the stiffness or increase or decrease the mass. On more complicated structures, not structures that have mass elements that have not calculated masses very specific, this might be a little bit more complicated because you will have to take into consideration the volume of the structure, the stiffness of it, and the mass that comes from the volume and the density. But uh, we'll look at those aspects in later tutorials. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Thank you for watching.